Okay, now in this video, we want to look at some particular examples based on what we discussed earlier, having rational exponents. So, suppose we have 8 raised to the power of 1 over 3, all right? So, this right here can be written as the cube root, all right? So, 3 enters the, and we have 8 raised to the power of 1, where the 1 is just this, and you know that this is going to be, well... What do you get? This is just 2, all right? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that means that the cube root of 8 is going to be 2. So which number will multiply itself 3 times to give you 8, all right? Now let's talk about another one. We have um, 16 raised to the power of 1 over 4. This right here can be written as the foot root of 16, which is just 2. Check it out, all right? 2 times how many? So are you going to multiply, okay? How many repeated products are you going to get? 16. So it's going to be 4. Okay, great. So you observe a pattern now. The first thing you should observe is, let me just put this down as our observations that if a raised to the power 1 over n, which is um, the nth root okay, of a, that if this right here gives us b, all right, that if we do that and it gives us a number b, it means that our b raised to the power n is going to give us a. Okay, from the first two examples, that's what you get. Well, the next thing I'd like to consider, let's talk about um, negative 27, okay, raised to the power of um, 1 over 2, or sorry, 1 over 3. Okay, we don't want to get something in static form now. So, negative 27, okay, raised to the power of that, this is just going to be, uh, the 3 is in the denominator, okay, Sorry, the, yeah, the denominator of the exponent, so it's going to be the root. That is going to be the cube root, all right? And we just put down the negative 27, and we raise it to power 1, okay? To just remain the same. Okay, now look at this. What is the result? That is, what is the cube root of negative 27? Hmm. Let me put the 3 down first. Okay, well, when it comes to taking roots of a negative number... Some people get confused, right, on what to do whenever the number is negative. Now, someone will say that this has no solution, right? No, it has a solution, and the solution is just negative 3. Reason being that the index here is not an even number. The index here is an odd number, 3. So, negative 3, it means that if you multiply negative 3 with itself 3 times, you are going to get negative 27. And of course, it's true. But whenever we are having an even index that, for example, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, all even numbers. So, if you have an even index here, you can't take that, okay? You can't take it to a negative number. For example, the square root of a negative number. You can't do that in the set of real, in the set of real numbers, Okay? The fourth root of a negative number does not exist in the set of real numbers. This only works for odd indexes like fifth root, seventh root, even the third root, um, the cube root, and so on, all right? But, okay, so that also makes us to see that maybe this is a kind of first observation. Now, the second observation will be that, based on what I've just discussed here, that when we have A, uh, okay, if a is greater than 0, right? It means that negative A will be less than 0. So you look at it. When we have a number greater than 0, if you multiply that number with negative 1, right? That number will be less than 0. Okay? It means that negative A raised to the power of N, okay, um, is going to be the nth root of negative a, all right? That is the negative number now, because we're having negative a should be less than zero. It means this 
negative. That is, it is a negative number. So the negative n, I raise the power n, will be the nth root of um, negative a, and provided that n is odd. So you look at it, provided that n is an odd number, this will work out, all right? But if n is even, hmm, but if n is even, then we will have the negative a, sorry, this is 1 over n, all right? Sorry for that. Before I even use this, this is supposed to be 1 over n. So it means that negative a raised to the power 1 over n is not a real number. That is what it means. When we have a negative number, you take the even root of it. For example, let's talk about the square root of negative 16. All right? Now, you know that when we have, um, let's say, 16 raised to the power of 1 over 2, all right? This right here is equal to, now, on the number, we always put 3. Okay, we always put down the denominator here. Well, here there is no point putting two. In fact, don't put two here, all right? This already means square root, all right? You don't have to put the two again. So you just leave it like this when the denominator here is two. But if it is three, you have to indicate four and so on. But if it is just two, we just call this square root, all right? Very nice. So you leave it like this. So this right here means square root of negative 16. This has no solution in the set of real numbers. Maybe, okay, let's, let's make use of 4, because 4 will be very, very clear for you guys to see. Uh, negative 4. Now, the question is, according to this, that if we have the nth root of a certain number, and it gives us b, it means that b raised to the power of the index here will give us that number, all right? So let's ask ourselves this question. What is the number that when we raise it to power 2, it is going to give us negative 4? That is to say, when we multiply the number with itself two times, we will have negative 4. We know of 2 times 2. 2 times 2 will give us 4. So it's not negative 4. We know of negative 2 times negative 2, which will give us still 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 become positive 4 based on the negative times negative, which is positive. So this will give us positive 4, the two of them. The only time you're going to have negative 4, for is if you multiply 2 with negative 2. And of course, these numbers are not going to be the same. So that will not work out, all right? So this right here is not a real number. The result you will get is not actually a real number. It will lead us to a complex result, actually. But we are not going to do that in this course, all right? So we take it off. So whenever we have that, okay, that if A is positive number, and the negative a will now be a negative number. When we have this, then this is not going to be a real number when n is an even number, all right? But when n is an odd number, there is no problem. For example, if we talk about uh, the cube root, okay, let's take the cube root of something. The cube root of um, 3, 4, 3, negative 3, 4, 3. This right here is just going to give us negative 7, all right? So it, it works for odd this thing, all right? Odd, num uh, odd powers and then odd indexes and then negative numbers. For example, again, if we have fifth root of um, negative 2, 4, 3, this right here is going to give us negative 3, all right? So these are nice examples to illustrate that. Well, um, in our next video, I'm going to discuss something very important, still this kind of stuff. Maybe I'm going to give you the three cases we are going to have by summarizing them and then we will move on to something else. Again, okay, anyway, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.